bouncing. Keep bouncing. Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to rip your Dreamcast games using a broadband adapter. As you can see the the model number is the HIT 0400 and it'll have a LAN on the back rather than LINE which is the modem. In this video you're going to need obviously an Ethernet cable and then your Dreamcast needs the ability to be able to read CDRs and you're going to need the um, disc that's shown on screen there. There are other methods, more convenient methods, but you'll need the Dreamshell adapter that fits into the serial port, the SD reader, and then you can rip your GD ROMs onto your SD card using Dreamshell as well. And there's uh, and the GD Ripper application, and that's just a screenshot of that. And the other one was the DC SD Rip. Right, let's get started. First, you're going to need to configure your IP address to correspond with the settings that you're going to use on the broadband adapter using XDP browser. But first, this is the method that you need to do to set up. I'm going to change your adapter settings. I'm going to be using the local area connection. This is a list of all the connections. Yes, can vary, but just. Um, Stick to the LAN one unless you've got a, a router and then you, you connect that up and via the Ethernet cable and then you'd make the necessary changes depending on what your IP address is and your gateway and so on. Right, it's, it'll start on obtaining an IP address. If you're going to change it, you're going to use my method because you have to use go on and use the following IP address. Make sure you take note of the settings that you've got originally so you don't, when you go back to your normal settings, everything can go back to normal. Right, input these settings here that you see on screen exactly as they are. And what I'll do now is just I'll go to the command prompt and I've got nothing connected, I'm not connected to the internet in any way, shape, or form, so there's no settings. But you go to the command prompt, type in IP config. And all those settings that you saw earlier, all those connections that you saw earlier on, that were these connections, it'll the list. This is the list, and it'll give you your IP address, your default gateway, your subnet mask, and other bits of information that would be necessary if you want to use your own settings when configuring the broadband adapter in XDP. All right now. In this portion of the video, I'm going to show you everything from the Dream, Dreamcast perspective, and then later on, I'll show you everything from the perspective of, in my case, the laptop. So I've just put in XDP browser. The screen that you presented with goes straight to options. First, you want to set up the timer. Because when you go on it by default, it will be on for five minutes and it'll time out if the, after five minutes. It, it took me ages to figure it out. I was downloading stuff and it always cut off and I had no idea why, but this happened to the reason. So I'll turn that off and go to Network Info. Use the BBA. It'll be on auto, but um, I, some people have said that they can't get it to work if you choose it, it as auto. So do it as manual. And those are the exact settings that I did set up. That you saw in the first portion of the video. Just click on the field and it'll bring up the keyboard, and then you can just um, type in the numbers and the full stops and stuff. And what you want to do is go to, um, to type in the primary DNS as what you see on screen there, and then there's, that's all you need to do. You get to this point, and then you—I um, can't remember if you store the password or don't store the password. But I've already configured it, so you, you'll have to—you just have to try which, which method works. But I think don't store password, and then it'll save a three-bot file to your VMU. A little screenshot will be coming up in a minute once um, you, you save. So it's in the middle there, that's highlighted in yellow, and that'll configure all the information that's been set up. All right, so now you will be connected. At this point now, I'm going to um, just open the disk tray 
and then it will disconnect and this is where this um, HTTPD act comes into its own I just place that in there I speeded a lot of this up, it, it, it does take a bit longer but obviously for the purposes of this video I wanted to try and make it as quick as I possibly could but read the disk once it's ready the little play icon will start bouncing around press on that And this is the screen you, you'll be presented with and then at this point again because once you take out XDP it disconnects from your laptop and this disk reactivates the connection again and then once it's reactivated you can take out the disk and then that's when you're placing the game that you want to rip in this case it's as you can see there Soldier Fortune this is a Japanese unit but it obviously won't play the game unless you use some kind of boot disk but it's region free as far as ripping games is concerned Right now, this is from the perspective of the, um, in my case, the laptop. So, as you saw earlier, I would have put in XDP. So that's it connected, and you have to wait until you see that uh, particular logo and that exclamation mark. The reason that's there is because you, you don't have to be online in in order to um, rip the game. I'll just go back into um, Open Network Insurance settings, and then you can see the. That's what it'll look like. It's connected. And then when I come out of here, it will be disconnected because I've opened up the disk tray and then placed in HTTP deact and then that will reactivate it there. As you can see in the bottom left again, it's it's reconnecting. And then after you've placed in the disk of your choice that you want to rip, you can then open up your browser. I'm using Chrome, but um, I did try it in um, Internet Explorer 10, I think it is. A little screenshot will pop up once I've um, typed in the IP address. There it is. A little screenshot there, that's just to, to show you it works in Internet Explorer as well. And when it does connect up the little screenshot you see in there that'll um, shows that everything's connected and then when you choose the actual track as you can see there it'll it brings up all that information so this is what you'll actually be seeing on your television screen then I've clicked on track one it's downloading clicked on track two and then at this point I, um, I fast forward and then I sh go to the this GDI because that's a slightly different method rather than just clicking on it but you would go through each individual track and this is by far the quickest method but you'll see once I get to track 6 the kind of speeds we're talking and then once you do the disk GDI you right click go to save link as and then you can choose which folder you wanted to um, to go to but you might as well just choose the download folder where all the, um, the tracks from the GD-ROM are going because you're going to have to put them all into one folder in the end anyway and just save and that's what it looks like it's like a Q file that's um, if you open it up that's what the thing looks like right, now I'm going to go to track 6 which the last track is always the, the largest in this case it's a gig I just bring up the show all download so you can get a better look at it you see the kind of speeds early on it will be it'll average between 1.2 uh, 1 and 1.2 kilobits per second but as it gets further on into the disk it peaked at about um, 1.7 but I'd say on average it's about 1.4 and it'll take 16 to 17 minutes to do a gig which is is a lot faster than if you do the um, DC rip method or the um, dream shell GD ripper method so if you're ripping a lot of games it's going to help save your laser as well then the reason I like this method is because I've got a lot of games and I wanted to um, put them all onto a hard drive so I could play them with the new methods of gameplay that are out there for the Dreamcast these days and you'll see that a little bit later on right this is the download folder this is what the download folder will get look like and then there's one last step that we have to take 
and there'll be, for some reason there's always a corrupt sector when you do this method so you open up CD merge and then you'll open up the folder what you've placed all your tracks in from the rip um, and it's, it's, as you can see at the bottom there it's the soldier of fortune folder and it's, it has all the tracks in there and the, the GDI file as well but you only need to open up track 1 track 0 one dot bin leave all the default settings as they are. It'll open up a queue file so and you can delete this at the end so you know, bear in mind where you put where you're placing it it's by default it would have gone into the Soldier of Fortune folder but so I decided to put it onto the desktop. Then once it's done this just click on this um, session one track one yeah and then you'll go to um, find corrupted sectors uh, scan for corruption that's the one leave it as default scan you see what the arrow is there the percentage and you can see to the left that as well errors in this instance there was three and I've never had three before but it was typical you know me recording this but um, there's usually one or two errors sector errors and for some reason it won't repair the third but I promise you this is the method that you can that, that works so now you go to um, repair corrupted sectors Click on that, just click on yes, and then it will repair those two corrupted sectors. But for some reason, it wouldn't repair the third. And I wasn't going to redo it, but I promise you, this method has worked for me multiple times before. Right, and now as you can see, there you can delete the Q file now you've finished with it. And it'll also open up, open up a temporary folder, which is the Dreamcast BBA one, that's what I called it. And you can delete that. And the reason I've done all this is because you've got the GDE MU or the USB GD ROM controller and you can place all them onto the hard drive and play the games open up the disk GDI file and happy days. That's all in this video. I hope that it helped you and if you've got any questions and I know the answer to them I'll definitely reply to you. So thank you for watching. Bye.